Sound speed. Sound speeding. Speeding on the sound. <sighs> Want to take one, Marker? Leave my fuzz alone. Hello, hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm Ryland Adams, of course, joined by... Lizzie Gordon. And we have... Chris. He's back. <laughs> He's back. People have been very concerned about your whereabouts. Really? But here he is. Hello. Here he is, everybody. We're all here. Are you so excited? Girl, I, I am so excited. I have a, a few bones to pick with you. Which is shocking, because I actually have quite a few bones to pick with you. That is a lie. No, it's I've not. I've done nothing but be oh, absolutely... Oh, started the day gaslighting the fuck out of me. <laughs> what? Today? Yes, today. today? Are you joking okay. right oh. now? The camera's rolling and you're acting like you didn't do what you just Let's did. Let's start for a second. I've been reminding myself it's been a little bit of a stressful week like so fun but a little bit stressful lizzie was walking into the door i was standing there waiting for her at the back of a long hallway and like we a, both like, a, like julia roberts in a rom-com she from the opens 90s. the door and we're wearing the same thing without ever having spoke about it yep she screamed i screamed we all screamed for ice cream <laughs> we ran for each other almost embraced and then i heard her voice was raspy and i was like are you sick get away i from mean me. i got back from the desert yesterday so everything is dry as fuck like my hands hurt the first thing i did was go Ooh, to costco and I buy lotion hear that and it gave me that's what i was doing in the shivers. car i was like Stop! Hands should sound like that. It's fucked up. But um, like waking up in the middle of the night, like <gasps> gasping on some dry desert throat. My nose is fucking bleeding. I want to see your full, beautiful face. I'm so gross. It's a nice up bun. It's the millennial bun of your dreams. What is okay? Girls don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, but I'm dirty. My hair's dirty and yucky, and I didn't have time to shower because my dogs are also fucking dirty and yucky. So you were late because of them? Yes. Five times I had to go out and like I had to close all the curtains in the front and like wedge the couch up against the front window so Icky can't see out because I swear to God he's gonna break through that glass. <laughs> And he won't shut up. And they're barking like there's a home invader. So I had to go out three times. I'm like naked and trying to get ready for the show. But I can't go out there naked because I can't have like James seeing me. So each time I have to put clothes on, go back out, come back in, take the clothes off, go back to my face. And she complains about my dogs. Well, the third time I went out there, I was like, I'm not putting pants on. And guess who was there finally? James. <laughs> we both screamed like little idiots, <laughs> which is so annoying. You were puss out, puss out. No, you weren't. No, I had I had panties on. You're lying now. I had just panties you don't on. want the internet to know that the <laughs> other man in your life saw the bear puss. We both screamed and then got nasty with each other. I was like, "You need to wear a bell." He's like, "You need to listen." And then as I was driving here, I texted him. I was like, "Listen, I'm so sorry. I was only yelling because I was scared." He was like, "I was scared too." <laughs> wow, and Joe will never know, right? No, which is shocking because Joe walks out full Pooh Bear, like dick out, only a t-shirt on, but like raw buns through the kitchen, through the house. No one ever fucking catches his ass. Dick out? Dick out, Pooh Bear. He you hear walks me? around with his dick out? Yeah, but a t-shirt on. <laughs> I love him so much. It's so insane. It's the craziest shit I've ever seen. I'm like, really? Like, really? <laughs> so his, his tops... It's very confusing to yeah. me because it's like, I don't know, the I breeze on the balls. I would put pants on my yeah. penis before I put pants on my chest. Exactly. Like, yeah. I can feel the cool breeze on my chest, but the cool breeze on my balls shriveling up inside of my body. It's Ooh. really, it's a confusing choice that he makes. I'm already having fear that's running through my body and I've been begging. So after all of like my like heart scare and all whatever's been going on with the tightness of the chest i was like i need to book a just a primary care physical because i haven't had a physical in years because mm -hmm. i feel like i'm so healthy the that fact that you're picking a bone with me continue uh, oh no keep going well this just segued <laughs> into it because I we know. were talking about dicks yeah and so <laughs> i've scheduled the physical and it's like as the days get closer the fear gets stronger and i begged elizabeth to come to my physical with me that's because, not true uh, yes i did what are you talking what? about give me an example of the begging I called you on the phone when I was walking my dogs. Maybe you couldn't hear oh, me I because there's no service, yeah. but she stays on the phone with me the whole time, even though she's like, I can't hear you. And then I keep <laughs> talking and it's like 30 minutes of her being like, I can't hear you. <laughs> I can't hang up on him though. Cause he's still talking. Like what am I, that's so rude. <laughs> and I was like, can you please come with me? But you had said that you scheduled your own appointment for that day too. Yeah. And that so you're now, not going with me too. What, no, I as I told you about my appointment first. I'm pretty sure your appointment came up because of my appointment. No, I told you we could have coordinated our schedules oh, together because true. we both are kaiser girls that is true we could have been hanging out at kaiser together yeah no i don't think i'm going to the same kaiser as you 
Which is wild. It's very annoying. Why would you not go to the... I don't know how to use the fucking Kaiser app. And honestly, Ch- I was going to ask teach you for you. help today. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I do not know how to use that motherfucker. Uh, Chris can give you an in-depth tutorial of how to work that whole system. <laughs> I just think my ADD is too gnarly for me to do anything on an app that requires, like, f- very focused attention and reading. Like, I can't... That's how I got fucked on my taxes. I can't fucking look at that shit. <laughs> I can't read that. Are you kidding? Fine print? No, thank you. Numbers and letters correlating and charts... I don't know about this hanging cord. That's going to drive me crazy in post production. <laughs> You're the one who hung it. Is that better? Uh, yeah. That's a little bit better. I don't know how it could okay, get any Okay, before better. we get to the bone that you have to pick with me. Yeah. Chris, how have you been? They're all wondering about you. Oh, I'm okay. Busier than ever. <laughs> really? Right around the holidays? Yeah. I feel like all my clients leading up to the holidays book a billion shoots because they're about to go on the holidays and they want to like stockpile. Oh, shoot. So it's always insane up into the holidays and that's what it is right now. <laughs> You're never going to sleep again. Lucky no. boy. He's alive. He's, he's, he's ha- blessed, booked and blessed. Happy to be working. <laughs> um, I Okay, what's your problem with me? Well, I have fought long and hard for our Orange Theory group to do a Taylor Swift day, and it is upon us. And I texted this motherfucker, and I said, you have to come with me to the Taylor Swift experience at my Orange Theory fitness gym. I'm helping them curate a playlist. Which is this happening because you had brought yes. this to fruition? <laughs> so I asked one time, I was like, could you guys do a Taylor Swift day? My friend and I experienced a particularly horrible Michael Jackson an experience <laughs> and i thought maybe you guys could do a taylor swift day and they're like i don't know and then i asked again a few weeks later and then my favorite instructor came up to me and she was like so a couple people asked for a taylor swift day and i was like i think really? it was just me twice <laughs> and they're doing it now but why do they have to make it a 90 minute class that's what really throws me for the loop i can't move or function as an adult after a 60 minute class well then we can leave after 60 minutes Really? Yeah, who cares? Who does a 90 minute orange What theory are they going to do? Hold a gun to our head and tell us to stay? <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. I'm happy out here. to leave. I'd be like, you know, you know, I'm weak. You know, I've been speed walking lately. Um, but yeah, so you said you would come in writing, in a text. You texted, yes, I'll go. And then I said, sign up for the class before it gets full and you have to buy a ticket on SeatGeek. And this motherfucker says, I'm not going. I didn't say I'm not going. He I said, said no, fuck no, no. you, Orange bitch. Theory is so fucking annoying. Like, he I said, like their class. Fuck you. She's being nasty. She's being nasty. And then he sent me a picture and, of his uh, butthole, <laughs> bent over, cheek spread, shit crusted around the fucking rim. What? That's such a lie. It was really aggressive. If it's such a lie, why are you laughing? Because that's so If it's so such insane. a lie, how did I get into such detail about the shit being crusted around the rim? Because you're nuts. Oh. And the crazy part is it's so believable that everyone's going to believe that it happened because I'm crazy like that. Yeah, he's but crazy I would like not. That. I yeah. would not. If anything, I'd use I would a bidet. Not. I, he says, well, not making, crusty. not making eye contact. I would not do that. <laughs> that's not something I would do. Lizzie's been begging me to come back to California for months. <laughs> and the second. No, no, this, is no, no, this is my call now. I've been sending him news articles of horrible shit happening in Colorado. I've just been like, dude, what? What is, is it safe to stay there? <laughs> and he doesn't read any of it or respond. So then I started sending it to Morgan. And she also left me on red and did not respond until recently when she was like, oh my God, that's crazy. And I was like, don't worry about it, girl. You guys are here now. It's all good. <laughs> I was being emotionally manipulated. But, okay, so leading up, <laughs> three months leading up, she's like, when are you going to come? When are you going to come? When's it happening? I find Finally tell her when it's happening. She doesn't respond because it's like she's at a Halloween party winning best costume, which I understand. Hold on. You can get back to yourself in just a second. Okay. <laughs> and then I, so no response there. And then a couple weeks later, I get here and I'm like, I've landed. Silence. No response. <laughs> I'm like, hey, mama, nothing. And then she sends me a picture of her dog and she's like, my dog's having problems. I can't talk to you. I was like, what like i came back for you and you can't even talk to me right now you don't Honestly, remember it was the night of your movie premiere that you went to oh, before the sag after strike was up right. so you're a scab i'm not a, i'm not i'm one. not a scab it scab was, <laughs> i was not my it was not my movie premiere number one i think it was also after the strike was up to be honest i don't think it was TBH. i think it was tbh <laughs> i don't think it well had i been. think it had i been. think they had, I think it had been and then guess what i didn't pr- i didn't plug the movie well, i'm not in the movie smarter you'd say i'm not the one that wore a barbie costume before the second and also, See, I just I'm gave not you a even, weapon, and you didn't even get in for it. Because I'm not a violent person. That's you, Mr. Krusty Butt. <laughs> anyway, I'm not sure I would call the film I saw a film. It was so fucked up and bad, and three oh, fucking hours long. That and you it was had to make so up bad. a problem for your dog to leave. No, my dog. I was so to me, honest to nasty. God. It feels nasty to say this, but when James texted me, Icky threw up. I said, "Well, I gotta go." 
can't sit here another moment longer and now I have an excuse to leave. <laughs> Said bye to no one. Got up and left. <laughs> that shit was awful. There's a couple of... I shouldn't even be nasty right now. Do you even care how I'm adjusting? No, I don't. <laughs> I got home and the house was in disarray. I had just spent we- spent weeks cleaning out the house in Colorado. Every single cabinet from everything we've accumulated forever, mm-hmm. like trash cans and donations out the ass. And I was like, wow, I feel so good. I was sitting pretty, feeling great on top of the world. And then we walk into this house. It's all fucking cardboarded up. There's fucking yeah. walk lines everywhere from construction because the two rooms had to be completely emptied. The closets included mm-hmm. everything inside of them. Half of the stuff is like we had moved out of this house all the stuff from the closet was just thrown in the beauty room the beauty room was like stacked all the way to the ceiling with stuff Mm. and i was like i'm gonna have a panic attack and i just need to leave (laughs) but the the issues have been solved Mm -hmm. the from the leak the whole saga is coming to an end and the nursery is now being rebuilt it's getting cute um and it was a good opportunity to purge the things I may have never purged because the things that had been in that guest room closet have been there for probably three years. It's crazy. And it was in there. so packed and overwhelming that it was like, when was I ever going to think this is a good day to unpack this closet? But I was yeah. forced to kind of go through everything, pull it all out and get rid. Mm-hmm. So if you go to a Goodwill near us, there's going to be lots and lots of merch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking about our merch, I've been seeing a lot of people talk about how they wish they would have been able to get some when it was live. Mm-hmm. They're like, when are you going to bring it back? The answer is, I have no idea. <sighs> We got. Oh. Yeah, that they... was a really confusing thing. Well, you just did a lot of no, misdirection. Nobody. I told thought me. you were about to tell us it was going to be now. Well, I thought no, that we were going to get a little surprise. I think so. I don't know. A little Black Friday sale surprise. I, I'm not sure. Get it now, but no, he says I don't know. Well, I'm not sure if this design belongs to me or not, or if the merch company that had made it designed. Can't this you and just I ask the merch it? company to make it again? Well, no, I don't think it's sold enough, so they took it oh. off the site without even. And that's telling on me. you guys. You guys did this. <laughs> the sip coffee cup is a logo that we had made so i can bring that back and i can probably try to bring a version of this back mm-hmm. if um i bootstrap it myself let's see how that goes or we could make our we could make a new one i think this is so cute though i love it we could totally make a new one though okay that's our own all right we're cute girls we do cute girl things like shower <sighs> Do you want to talk about my Halloween costume? Because I don't think that, like, we I, have enough. Well, I wasn't done talking about my week back yet. Oh, keep going. So my mom and my sister, they came with me. Um, it was so, so fun. fun. We got so much sun. It was, like, 80s the whole time they were here. We were swimming. We were hot tubbing. We were going out to eat. We were living a wonderful life. And now that they're gone, it's so devastating and sad. Because it is just kind of like... I do think even more than when I'm in Colorado, I get to spend like meaningful, fun time with them because they're stuck in the house. Yeah, they're not going anywhere else. There's nowhere for them to go. Whereas at home, there's like all the daily distractions of life. So this oddly feels like we're on a vacation. So I'm hoping I'll be able to steal the family back to get them here to stay here like for long amounts of time constantly. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't do anything but have fun. So I got no work accomplished. And now it feels like I'm coming off of a four or five day vacation. How fun. And now I'm stuck looking at you. Oh. This bitch. Just kidding. This motherfucker. It's so and he, and he thought I'd go to you. the doctor with him? <laughs> okay, so your Halloween costume. I was a bald eagle. Insert image, please. Have we not talked about this? No, we haven't been here. Are you kidding? No. We haven't seen each other in months. We do you know how much we missed? We missed the Britney fucking book release. Oh, we we're missed to that. Which I can I just say my qualm up front? I wouldn't have paid fifteen ninety nine if I knew it was coming for free on Spotify. What? It I got a notification when I opened Spotify the other day. It's like Britney's book has hit Spotify. Wow. And I'm like, I just paid fifteen dollars for this book. Crazy. I mean, I'm happy to support Britney. Yeah. And I'm happy that she got I hope she gets some back end. I know of she got like she a big up front. I mean, I don't know the deal she negotiated for herself. I think oh, she Oh, I got, hope to God she I it would be weird as fuck she if she didn't get a piece of the sales. Ten million up front yeah. for doing it. And then I hope she'll get a portion of what it sells after mm-hmm. that. Um 
But yeah, it just hit Spotify and I was like, well, I already paid for it. I bought it too. Friends, family, and Lumi whole body deodorant. These are things I'm thankful for this year. And if you're asking why, well, it's because Lumi is a deodorant like no other. It was created by an OBGYN who discovered BO isn't just an underarm thing, it's an all over thing. She developed a pH optimized deodorant that's clinically proven to block odor everywhere, not just your pits, but your privates, feet, and beyond. The best part is no matter where you use it, Lumi is proven to keep working for up to 72 hours. If three days of odor control isn't something to be thankful for, I don't know what is. I get ass sweats and I love that I can stick Lumi right on my ass because that's what it was made for. Lumi is baking soda free and paraben free. It's pH balanced for safe use below the belt, which is what I'm over here talking about. And my favorite thing is Lumi's starter pack. It's perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, a cream tube deodorant, and two free products of your choice, like mini body wash or deodorant wipes, plus free shipping. So as a special offer for our listeners, new customers get $5 off Lumi's starter pack with our exclusive code and link. And for a limited time, returning customers can also get $5 off their next purchase of $30 or more too. Use code SIP at lumideodorant.com. That's L-U-M-E-D-E-O-D-O-R-A-N-T.com. Thank you, Lumi, for making this holiday season smell a whole lot better. Okay, back to your Halloween costume. I was a bald eagle. Insert another picture. <laughs> Maybe even a video. <laughs> and it was like a husband reveal. Did he approve that? I don't, see, everyone keep a, keeps asking like... Because you go on the internet and say he will not be seen on the internet. He will not be... He doesn't want to be in my YouTube videos, but he's all over my Instagram. He's, From years ago, not since you started no, we blogging. No, literally, I literally posted him this year on his birthday and you texted me, uh, not a husband reveal. <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> That motherfucker is all up on my Instagram page. Real ones know too. And they're in the comment section being like, not everyone calling this a husband reveal. And it's like, I love you guys. Because they're the real ones. They know. Not even I know. But yeah, we were the eagle has landed. So Joe was the president and I was a bald eagle. Yeah. And it was good. It was really good. Until you see Heidi Klum and you're like, oh, that's Fuck what a professional makeup artist. Bitch. Hold on. Hold no, on. I'm no. just saying like. You know how sometimes I don't turn on Taylor, but it's like sometimes I'm just feeling like jealous. Well, it's like um, a little ugh, I don't know what you like. I'm having a tantrum about Taylor. He for likes no to reason. shit talk Taylor and then, all no, the time. No, no, no. Oh, yeah, he'll text me. He'll be like, "This fucking bitch," and I'll be this like, is, "You're you like that's the guy who spent ninety five thousand dollars on that's Taylor Swift shit this year." I have such a hard on for Taylor Swift. Yeah. I love Taylor Swift so much. Sometimes we just have little tantrums about her, and then I'll text Lizzie an hour later and be like, "Forget what I said. I was just jealous." <laughs> <laughs> and I realize that sometimes it's just jealousy popping through. Yeah. Okay. And it's crazy that like certain people. It is people, crazy that you do Like that. I can be happy for some people. And not, no, I'm very happy for Taylor Swift. But like there's some celebrities where like that never happens. Like Harry Styles. We'll get to him in a second. Yeah. Never happens. Even though he's like the the like most beautiful, confident man that every woman in Hollywood wants to fuck. I don't feel that way. Mm -hmm. Timmy gives me the fucking ick. She, he's talking about <laughs> Timothee Chalamet. I get a visceral reaction and I can't like it's really hard for me to decipher if it's like jealousy mm -hmm. or like real loath for a person. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, but I feel like we've strayed away from me being a bald eagle. Oh, right, Please this insert is all about, another picture here. This is all about Heidi Klum upstaging No, Lizzie. it's not and about Heidi Klum. Said, We're not even talking about her or giving her the airtime on this channel. It seems like right after your Halloween costume of, happened, you won two costume contests. I went to three parties and I won two costume what contests. What happened to the third party? There was, was no Heidi Klum there? There was, <laughs> there was no costume contest at the third. <laughs> But it was very fun. And I wanted to say before the parties even started, when I was out buying my beak and mm -hmm. my bald cap, I bumped into Colin motherfucking Hanks at the Nigel's makeup store on Magnolia in the Valley. What was he doing there? And I was having a conversation with my friend Trisha. And we were talking about how she would, because she's a makeup artist, put the bald cap and the beak on for me. And I was like, well, you can't put the bald cap and the beak on for me because I still have to go out and get my feathers and shit. So I couldn't be just like walking around with a makeup free beak and bald <laughs> cap because that's crazy. Mm -hmm. And then Colin Hanks turns around. And he goes, be bold. Do it. And I was <gasps> like, Colin Hanks, I don't think you understand <laughs> that I cannot be that bold 
Which is shocking because I feel like I you actually, could do anything. I know, but I actually turned to him and I said, it's already enough that I'm trying to stop myself from singing, I can fly higher than an eagle every five seconds right now. And then he and I both laughed. He's like, no, I get it. I had full really bad hair dye on before I left the house and I was too embarrassed to leave. So I fully showered, put a hat on and then I came out and I was like, oh, Colin, so you get the shame. And he's like, I get the shame. Who was he with? Do we know his wife. anything about his personal life? His wife, I think. Some blonde woman. Kids? I don't know. I don't know him. Okay. But he was talking to me like he knew me. Did his wife engage with you? She did not. But on the way out, I was like, good luck to you. And he was like, you too. And he was like, be bold. And I was like, you be bold. And then I said, like, yeah. And then I dipped. I didn't call. I didn't call. The I added that. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are like, she's a fucking liar. It's like, yes, uh, yeah, sometimes I am. Told me you didn't run into my house and then I found video footage. I can't trust Girl, any of your stories I on the podcast I didn't think anymore. I ran into your house. But I honestly, you- my hand, on the, my hand on, the, on the Bible, I did not think I hit your house. Okay. And at the time, I looked too. It wasn't into, gosh, that security camera really comes in footage. Did you see me falling into my pool this week? <laughs> <laughs> I only saw you falling into your pool because you texted me, go look at my Instagram stories. <laughs> well, because I had done slow, I had zoomed in and done slow motion there for you. So it was like, yeah. I know, sucks to be that person where I'm like, please go watch my Instagram. But you know but- what I did? I gladly went over and watched your Instagram And she story. was not worried about my health or well-being. This she motherfucker said, whacks was... this shit out of Uno. And no, expects I didn't. Us all, you, you're going down and you're like, goo, 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 <laughs> and Uno's full body just goes, <laughs> The reason rocked. I went down was because of him. He literally dropped his tennis ball that he had chewed the shit out of in the pool. So then it sunk to the ground. So he kept looking at it like he was going to dive into a 12 foot pool and go all the way to the bottom. So that scared me. Right. I got the pool thing out to scoop it up. Mm-hmm. You're a hero. Had a misstep. <laughs> Cracked. Fell. Wow. And as you're falling like that, you really like the things that go through your head. You're, it's like happening in slow motion while you're going down. And I was like am I really going to fall into the pool right now? Like it was happening at such like a slow pace. The way that your hair flopped as you went down and Haley and I watched that over and over and over. And Haley was like, did he just break his legs? <laughs> like is the inside of his legs fucked for well, life? Now? I also can because like I you felt... split like someone ripping a fucking roasted chicken's leg off. I fell onto my knee and I was like, oh, I'm gonna be fine. And of course, I fall to the side that's the pool and not the side that's the cement. And because the pool's not heated, it was zero degrees. My phone was in my pocket. Phones so, are waterproof now. Uh, well, yeah, uh, yeah, nothing happened to my phone. No. But that's why I jumped out of the pool so fast because yeah. I was like, my phone's in my, no, phone's in my phone. I saw you do that too, and I. Was like that idiot doesn't know that phones are waterproof i do but how can i trust how waterproof it really is Mm -hmm. it was fine yeah not even because it's waterproof wow so i can go down there like a gopro and just take videos underwater Mm -hmm. yeah if my a thousand dollar phone breaks because i do that after you gave me the go ahead (laughs) yeah then you owe me a phone i i can't make good on that the last i've just spent my last fucking penny on my dog's dermatology You need to stop. No, they need to go to the dermatologist. I'm not sure that they do. They do. (laughs) It feels like you're creating them to have sensitive skin problems. I have a French bulldog. I know. (laughs) They have skin problems. Okay. So then it comes out that Heidi Klum was also... We're done with this bitch. Oh, but I'm just saying she sent me literally 30 TikToks about it, about how enraged she was by her costume. And I was like, hey, like just best friend to best friend. Is this just like when I'm being nasty about Taylor Swift for no reason because I'm jealous? Like, are you mad that she had a team of 500 makeup artists? Yes. Okay, we can put that to rest. I think. Well, I think she's taking the fun out of Halloween by putting together a hundred thousand dollar gag. Right. And how dare she? And I only wish you would have put the. I'm on these streets making it work. You put into your costume, into our joint costume for all of them. I put Instead, such a small amount of energy into my costume. I bought it and came up with it on the day. It felt like it was way better than us as witches. Uh, it definitely was, and here's why: I found it. We needed a water based makeup for our face. Okay. And I thought about that the entire time because my friend Trisha was a witch and did it the way I saw it in my mind. And th- we'll put a picture here Got for it. next year. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to talk about your baby's birthday party or about Joe? Well, I will say this. My baby's <laughs> birthday party was sick. So you went to Arizona. I was thinking... You're a really good best friend. You like flew out to Arizona for days on end. Well, that's my baby. Okay. Oh my God. I don't know if I've told you this. If you Google it, 
they think that's my baby. What do you mean? There's an article on the internet that like AI generated about me that I didn't find, but my friend Katie found and she showed me and it's like all this weird shit about me down to the fact that they knew what my my beta fish was called like five years ago. It's crazy that they didn't even know your name a month ago and now they think you have a child and a beta fish. <laughs> well, no, I'm sure AI still doesn't know who I am, but this was an AI generated article. Okay. So it just pulled everything that I've ever put on the internet about myself and then put it out there. And then it, and like one art, one paragraph starts with, meanwhile, Lizzie and her husband enjoy spending time with their daughter. And it's a picture of me and my baby. Who's the husband? Joe. And was he there? No. Okay. That's it? Yeah. Your whole weekend in Arizona. And oh. all you have to talk about is an AR, AI article? I'm just saying they think it's my baby too and I love that. Okay. I'm just saying I went to Arizona because that is my baby. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Happy <laughs> birthday, Lily Mae. I love you. Hi, Lily. I don't think she if you say you. Lily she May, If you, you say Lily Mae, she will look at the TV. Okay. Lily Mae. Um, did you she said like... that in a really creepy way. Okay. <laughs> did she like your birthday gift? We haven't put it together yet. What? I know. So it's she's a not real even going to know it's from you. Here's the deal. That bitch has so much shit that How we much... have to get rid of all of her toys, give it to charity, and then build this kitchenette. So she's never going to know it's from you. And you probably, probably dropped not. like $300 on it. No, I didn't drop that much. But I do think that she'll enjoy it. And that's what matters to me. Okay. Yeah. All right. I just think it's very sweet of you oh thank you are I'm you gonna be flying to colorado when i'm in colorado for my children's birthday parties yeah probably wow you're a great friend no don't if you're having a birthday otherwise. party if you're not having a birthday party i'm not fucking coming for my kids of yeah. course i don't throw I parties have, for myself i, throw I have some for friends kids. who don't do big birthday parties and then it's like well i'm not coming right yeah i'm here for the cake and the gift bag and if there is neither i shall not be there this really intrigued me your headline that you gave for this upcoming story what is it about your husband I know. So I'm, I'm really hoping it delivers and doesn't fall flat. I mean, it's so crazy. So I get home from Arizona. I'm fucking tired. I'm hungry. I'm making the dogs food. I'm making my husband food. I haven't eaten yet. And he and I are talking about a situation that's going on where there's some criminal shit happening. Like some not not like criminal, but like some scammy shit. And we're talking about like these there's an investor situation for a project that's being worked on. And somehow there keeps being, quote, a bank fuck up. And there was no money being dropped into this account. And I was like, that's some Anna Delvey shit. And he was like, who? What? And I was like, what do you mean what? I was like, a bank fuck up. That's literally what Anna Delvey said. And he goes, who's Anna Delvey? And I was like, are you fucking stupid? And I got enraged. And I started screaming at him. I was like, you know, Anna Delvey, the fucking bitch that scammed a bunch of people. Like, EDF. Like, to your support. Like, I'm saying it like that. And he goes, what are you talking about? Can you explain it better? And I was like, the fact, I don't need to explain it better. Like, he goes, people don't know about this outside of, like, women like you who watch true crime shit. And I was like, no, this is part of the fucking zeitgeist. And the amount of times I listen to this motherfucker talk about flat earth just because he's into the conversation but he can't fucking figure out who Anna Delvey is, I could die. And then he takes the dog's fish out of the fucking oven and i put parchment paper down so it doesn't totally fuck my cooking sheets he doesn't use parchment paper so all my cooking sheets are fucked because of him which i have to deal with when i get home today by the way and he sets it on the fucking stove with the burner burning and then that <laughs> bitch gets fucking on fire all of these common sense things like Wait, who the is fuck is the Delby? Paper? yeah he caught the parchment paper on fire because he set it on an open flame <laughs> and he's like who's anna delvey like i'm an idiot <laughs> so how are you gonna deal with him i honestly he left and he came back and i was like sorry for being so nasty but i don't understand how you don't know who the fuck anna delvey is and i can't not be nasty about it because it's fucking crazy are we gonna follow up on what's going on with the reality show of hers i i don't know when it comes out probably otherwise i'm bored i'm just wondering if it's still happening or not i'm sure it is because she's working with kelly whatever from that lady who was like lauren's lauren conrad's boss on the hills oh kelly catrone yeah and she keeps doing like fashion shows out of her apartment with kelly where catrone. are you seeing this on the internet oh <laughs> is it on her stuff i think it's on like people oh yeah okay or it's on tiktok <laughs> oh what i'm taking a cpr class without you you just want me to be upset. <laughs> no, I'm just telling you. Like, Listen, listen. Chris, I feel like you've heard us discuss the CPR class together. Have you not? Maybe. 
every time am I not like, I need to be part of that because I'm scared that my knee jerk reaction is to shove my fingers down the baby's throat. Oh, uh, yes. Yes. And everyone in the comment section was like, please don't ever shove your fingers down the baby's throat because you're just clogging it more. Well, and guess what? Here's the thing. I will not be at the fucking CPR class that I suggested I be a part of because <laughs> he's doing it without me two today things. at one o'clock and did not invite me. There's two things. After I asked... For nine months, I said, I would like to do the CPR class for with you. Let's do the CPR class together over and over and over. I, and this motherfucker, you know what? It's poor parenting on your part. I, <laughs> I do feel bad and shame about this, but there's two things working against you. One, Shane booked it and he didn't hear your requests because I hadn't relayed the information to him. I have also asked Rylan multiple times to send an email to Shane so that he <laughs> understands how involved in these I'm babies' not- lives I'm going to be because I don't want to have beef with him because it is inappropriate how involved I see myself at this point and I want him to be braced for impact because it's crazy. It's crazy what I intend to do. <laughs> And I need both fathers to be on board or it's going to be a bumpy meshing. Okay. <laughs> That's not a joke. Send him an so, email. <laughs> I'm not sending my husband an email. Oh my God. You send my husband an email. It's not going to be good coming from me. <laughs> okay. And so Shane booked it. He was so nice. He like took over the task because he knows that I've been dealing with a lot and it's a priority for us to have this class before our kids come. I'm sure. And then... uh so she sent us she was like okay great i'll be there but you have to complete this course before i can come to your house and show me the certificate and it turns out it's like a full-blown like first aid cpr slash um it's an everything course it took me like two fucking hours to take this test online yeah and i almost like started screaming because it felt like I was in school and it was awful. And that's why I was like, well, you'd have to take this too before you can attend this in-person meeting. Yeah, I'd love to take it. Horrible. I mean, I learned a lot, yeah. but it's horrible. And they Do they quiz teach you about you. like burns and stuff? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Burns, bites, nose Bites? Bleeds. What do you do with bites? Like people bites Depend- or dog no. bites? Spider bites, dog um, bites, snake what's bites, the deal with burns, You're supposed to cuts, circle the bite to see how far it grows? Bleeds, fainting, literally everything under the sun. And then they quiz you about everything afterwards. And then you have to pass before you get this certification. What do you do with hey, the bite? Depends on which kind of bite. A spider bite. Do you circle it so you can see how the venom's pouring out? Mm, no, I believe that one was like you wash it with soap. I don't remember. She's coming today. Thank God. Uh, <laughs> Shane passed too, though, so I'll have him around. Um, but the main, but there was, there is an actual um, term for the clearing and clearing swooping the out that whatever. is like so not allowed. The, yeah. No, the reaching in and swooping yeah. out. There's like a term for it, and they're like, At no. I know, and I because we brought it up on the podcast before, and when I was begging you to let me go to your CPR class, and everybody in the comment section was like, "Do not do that." <laughs> I was, you know what? Now I won't do anything. Anyways, <laughs> it's happening at 1 p.m. today, so I'll keep you posted. Good. Uh, maybe you could just show up. And just see if tell her I'm you your fucking there. assistant or something. <laughs> oh, that might work. Tell her I'm your assistant. Then you can be there. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll just act like I'm doing something. <laughs> You're like managing the dogs. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's try it. Um, all right. Do you want to get into some hot topics or do you have anything else? Hmm. Do you want to throw hands at my comments? Oh, I think I could be over this. You're over it? This I had put in right when it had happened, but and it was when cool. we were cooking in my kitchen and literally there were like 600 comments about how I'm not going to be a sufficient parent because I have limited cooking skills. And I was just like, what the fuck do you think I'm going to do? First of all, for the first six months, it's formula. I feel like I've already had this. Um, I've released all yeah. of this anger yeah. on multiple different formats. <laughs> but it's also like, then once you do start introducing food, it's foods, it's sweet potatoes, mm-hmm. it's chicken. It's like very much so things that I can execute myself. Like I'm not stupid. No, he's not stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you told me you would tell them. I just told them he's oh. not stupid. <laughs> when the video came out, I was like, oh, let's see what people are thinking about this video. And then I go down and I was like, oh my God, it's just the whole world dragging me. And Lizzie's like, do you want me to go after him? I will. Where's that energy? You told me not to. I know, but now like, I'm doing what you told me to do. Per- do you want me to get nasty? It's like you're with them. He's going to be a good cooker. <laughs> and those babies are going to eat chicken boiled. 
and Boiled. shredded. I don't know. How do you plan to cook the chicken? When you said cook chicken, it seemed like you had an idea of how to do that. And I don't know that you do. I just don't know if I was going to boil it. What were you going to do? I was going to do it how I do it for myself on a pan. You make chicken for yourself? Sometimes. How do you do in it? In desperation. Do you put seasoning on it? No, a little bit of olive oil on the pan. Mm-hmm. And not much seasoning, no. Yeah, that's... <laughs> see, that's where you lose but me. But the kids don't want all the seasoning. No, the kids don't want all the seasoning. So it's fine. I yeah. cook as if I'm, You are a baby. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Today's podcast is sponsored by Uncommon Goods, which I have actually been shopping at for such a long time. So I was so excited when they came around to sponsor our podcast. And I'm telling you, if you want to hear, where'd you get that this holiday season? Uncommon Goods is your secret weapon. Uncommon Goods is here to make your holiday shopping stress-free by scouring the globe for the most remarkable and truly unique gifts for everyone on your list. Whether you're shopping for a secret Santa or your entire family, Uncommon Goods knows exactly what they want. Honestly, shopping on Uncommon Goods itself is most of the fun. You're going to find truly unique gifts for everyone in your life. I found great gifts for my sister's upcoming housewarming and also my husband who feels impossible to shop for at times because I'm like, oh, he has this or he doesn't need that. There's these specific, wonderfully crafted gifts that just scream, that's perfect for him. When you shop at Uncommon Goods, you're supporting artists and small independent businesses. These fine products are often made in small batches, so shop now before they sell out this holiday season. From jewelry to kitchen to home and bar, Uncommon Goods has something for everyone. Not the same lackluster gifts you would get at every department store that's selling the same things. Plus, with every purchase you make at Uncommon Goods, they give a dollar back to a nonprofit partner of your choice. They've donated over two and a half million million dollars to date. And of course, they're offering you something special. To get 15% off your next gift, go to uncommongoods.com slash the sip. That's uncommongoods.com slash the sip for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limited time offer. Uncommon Goods, we're all out of the ordinary. <laughs> yeah, let's get into some iced tea. <sighs> wow. And I hope all of you are enjoying this back to basics episode. I personally shut up. Don't side with them because I can't handle it. I will not. Do you want this podcast to continue on? Yes. Well, then why do you think I'm here? <laughs> what do you personally? What? I personally love being with you in any format. Thank, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mama. Okay. All right. So as I was curating this list of cold uh, ice tea. Um, Ryland starts texting me and I'm like, what are you doing? We're about to talk about this in like 10 minutes. But he is personally triggered and horrified by Harry Styles' buzz cut. I'm not personally triggered. I'm triggered by the internet's reaction. Why? Because it no one cared when you buzzed your hair? <laughs> <laughs> or are you pissed because you grew your hair out to be like Harry? And then he was like, I can't be in that guy's club. <laughs> no, I'm pissed because people's reactions are so horrible. Oh, like, they're nasty. I was, so I was trying to find the source because Lizzie put in this headline like hair. What do you you put Harry Styles buzz cut thoughts question mark. And I was like, <laughs> no image, no link, no anything. Yeah. So I had to start doing the searching myself. And very quickly on Google, all things led to TikTok. Like yeah. there weren't many articles about it. It was all like the green screen heads talking and pointing yes. at a picture of Harry Styles. I have beef with that too. And because all fucking press is always like someone, so-and-so arrives at something or other. And it's like, nobody fucking cares about that. But Harry Styles buzzes his hair and they don't have a fucking article about that. <laughs> no. I don't give a so, fuck about the baby and baby fucking gala that all these bitches are at dressed up for who, like I don't give a fuck show me Harry Styles' buzz cut people magazine and grow up the main image that people are referencing that's real is like him at a show or yeah. an event or something and then there's this other one mm -hmm. that seems like it might be AI generated it so does that, doesn't it like it, on a carpet it kind of feels yeah. yes I'm like w if he was on a red carpet debuting a buzz cut I feel like people then would have picked it up yeah do you know what I'm saying shocking so I'm didn't. like is this if I just put like, what do I look like with buzzed hair? So anyway, all these people are like on their green screen, on their high horse being mean. And <laughs> <laughs> like this girl was like, the hairline's giving jump scare. And I'm just like, <laughs> fuck you. Like, fuck you guys. If anything, and this is why I was getting so do riled up. Harry Styles has always been like my confidence icon. I'm like, <laughs> despite his slightly decent hair like receding hairline mm -hmm. he still has everybody wanting to fuck him you think his hairline's He's receding of course okay i mean mine i too. never looked that closely 
We've talked about it on this show. His I've talked line? about my love for his confidence about his hairline forever. Oh, okay. You've heard me talk about this. I must have forgotten that. You just that. don't care because you're a woman and you don't deal with these problems. I think I deal with receding hairlines. Really? Yeah, look at how thin it is right here right now. It's looking pretty good to me. It's because it's dirty. Um, no, even when he had his long hair, you could see. And that's why I was like, well, if he can rock it, I can rock it. And so now that he buzzed And then his you hair, went on to finasteride. In that, oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> I mean, I'm not trying to not reverse it. I'm not trying to organically, authentically rock it. <laughs> but... But what I'm working with, I'm trying to be fine with. <laughs> and so that's something I loved about Harry Styles. And if I want to drag you about Taylor Swift, yeah. you also said that you relate to Taylor Swift in some ways and like you idolize her in some yeah, ways. She's because a slouchy she... queen who can't dance just like me. <laughs> I think she's come a long way in dancing. I agree, but it's she... still not very far. What? And that's, no, but that's okay. What? That's okay. Are you really going to shit talk Taylor? I'm like not shit talking right Taylor, but you I'm just, just said saying... she can't dance. Have you seen her tour? Yeah, I love her tour. I her think tour, she kills no, I've it. never been so empowered in my fucking life. She kills it. But the your thing was like she has the slouchy shoulder yeah. and she like represents for us normal women. Yeah. Um, instead of being like so unattainable, which she is unattainable. Oh, she's unattainable as fuck. But like she, that's what I so that that you loved about Taylor Swift is what I loved about Harry Styles and the fact that he can buzz cut his hair and just still be confident about it. It just drives me crazy that all these people on TikTok <laughs> it's giving jump scare. I'm just like it's giving shut the fuck up. Like what? <laughs> who the fuck are you? Um. So it was just like grinding my gears a little bit um and then i was realizing how was i trying to tie this back um oh i was gonna question like why am i not like jealous or rage filled when it comes to harry styles but to me yeah turns that on for me and that's he why he said think, timmy for those of you that are confused timmy is timothy i think Chalamet. they all know i don't think they do because it sounded like you said to me <laughs> like to me like past that timmy. to me yeah Timothy Chalamet. Okay. You have, so he you, has rage and jealousy for Timothy Chalamet, the likes of which I jealousy. would get a private security person if I was no, Timothy Chalamet. I don't Chalamet. know that it's jealousy. I honestly just think it's rage. You, you spent a whole summer teaching yourself how to use a sewing machine so that you could make yourself an outfit inspired by Timothy Chalamet's looks. I mean, looks. his designer put that on him. I loved what he was wearing. <laughs> I don't know that that's my love for him specifically. Right, but, but you so regularly now, identify with week, his look. And listen, I'm sure he's a great guy. Uh, <laughs> and I, so he was on SNL this past weekend. I was trying to consume it. And for some reason, like rage just boils in my body because <laughs> you wish you were him. And it's like, cause he's I young think, you and I'm trying to figure out like, is he young? Yeah, I think so. I was trying to figure out like, what is Kylie so enthralled by? And I will say the man has confidence. It's the like, audacity. It's just like, he walks out onto that stage and he's confident. Like if he's yeah. selling it or not, he's confident. Yeah. And so like that is attractive. Yeah. But then I was watching like the skits and we'll talk about the Britney one in a second, but then even a different person playing Timothy mm -hmm. also enraged me. So <laughs> like it's something about the persona in general. Maybe it is because he has, um, he has no fucks. Maybe. And you, you have quite a few fucks. Well, he's, he's 27. 27. But I think you, because of the world, give quite a few fucks. And he gives none. And that might be something that enrages you. Maybe because he's so successful at such a young age. It could he's be. He's just in power. I mean, you were successful at quite a young not age. Not like Timothy. I mean, he's in every big movie. And I'm not saying I don't yeah. like his acting work. Like, I'm very excited to see Wonka, actually. Me too. Should we go? Yeah, after After we go to CPR training? Is it out? Probably. Today? I think so. It's been out. Really? Oh, actually, I don't know. Maybe it comes out on the 22nd. But anyway, I love him. Okay. I love him. Okay. I love him. I'm so happy for you. So Britney's PR team did not like the Britney SNL sketch. I think this was just her manager that spoke yeah. out. But you put in the link and it was like, uh, link no longer available. And then I Googled it and I clicked on like three other articles and all these people are taking their articles down. So then I had to go back to TikTok. To Why are watch they taking their articles down? I don't down? know. I wonder if like, I don't know what's happening behind That's the really scenes. That's really weird. But yeah, these like major outlets are taking down their articles. But um SNL does what SNL does, and I actually thought the sketch... So, well, SNL did a sketch where uh, one of their main characters plays Britney talking about the other celebrities that auditioned to read her book, if not Michelle Williams. I, and then it's like a like one of the cast members plays Timothy Chalamet, but it's not Timothy Chalamet. And then Timothy Chalamet plays uh, Martin Scorsese. And somebody they, plays Alice and Janney. Really poorly. Can we talk about how shitty the Alice and Janney impression was? 
all of it was weak as fuck to me and it go it went on for like four fucking minutes of the same thing. I thought bit. it was funnier than most SNL. Th- well, I guess that what I, where I saw was an article and they like super cut it. So yeah. maybe I didn't see the whole thing, but I thought it was pretty funny, but Britney's manager like went really in. He said no, no wonder publicist. Oh, I, I think it was his manager. I, I think, think it was her publicist, Cade. That's her manager, oh. Cade. Well, we'll never know. No, I do know. Kate is I guess we'll find out. <laughs> he said, no wonder you all reached out to me to get Britney on the show. SNL is on life support. You all are pathetic. And this Chloe isn't funny. Did you find her on Craigslist or something? <laughs> and so here's my problem. I'm like, you're mad that they like poked fun at something, but then you hit like equally below the belt like your response is just as filled in, with nasty with, yours is more mean-spirited might i say yeah maybe equally yeah and i understand like i did listen to britney's book and she does not want to be scrutinized by the media mean by the media rightfully so like mm-hmm. i understand her life has been defined by other people ruining her life by being invasive so Mm -hmm. maybe it's not something she wants i hate to say it's like something that comes with it but she did make 10 million dollars for publishing a book yeah so of course snl is going to make a skit about it yeah and i get that but the the, uh, for me did you finish the book uh i was landing on the plane so i have three minutes left i kind of felt like it it's uh like a diary entry of a lot of really fucked up things that have happened to her. Mm-hmm. So when you poke fun at the way that a person articulates their trauma, like it is kind of fucked and it's not really that funny to me. Right. So that's why I can understand why someone would be defensive of her in that regard. I get it. Yeah. No, I get it. And I get that her, like, you really do feel for her in this book. And I loved the book. I loved getting the background about her childhood and how she grew up yeah. grew up, and the dynamics. I wanted a little bit more, but I thought it was great. Like, I Same. thoroughly enjoyed listening to the book. Yeah. Um, yeah. Same. Wonka comes out on December 15th. That's a whole month away. And Ugh. that's when my babies are hopefully coming out. That's literally their due date. Well, it's not literally their I due know, date. I know, but it's like but it's literally their, their due date. It's their full term due date. Yeah. Right. Why do they do that with twins? Like, why would they say, oh, this is their due date when full term for twins, that's not their due date? I don't know. Like, that's crazy, right? If full term's 37 weeks, then why would they be giving me a due date of 40 weeks? I, I think they mean they up. must mean different things. No, they don't. It's the due date, but well, full term means like, but good, right? Full term, like good, <laughs> <laughs> like that'll do. But like due date is like not a day longer. You know what but I mean? But a lot of people do go past their due date. Like yeah, a lot and of then people they get do. Induced. I think they say like up to forty-two weeks is when the, if if you're like two weeks over, mm-hmm. that's when doctors start to get a little concerned. A little antsy. Yeah, like yeah. we need to look at what's going on or why yeah. it's not coming out. Let us know in the comments below. I'm sure they will. So I did see some um, somebody tell me that was a twin mom that gave birth to twins. She was like, I got induced at thirty-seven weeks, or yeah, I got induced at thirty-seven weeks, or she had a C-section at thirty-seven weeks, and she was like, looking back. They were fine in there and they didn't need to be. So I wish I would have taken them to 40 weeks because they were still doing well. But our surrogate, the last time she had given birth to twins, she did give birth at 37 weeks. So I think it would probably follow a similar timeline. I think after you have, not always, but I think after you have one, it kind of goes up to or before typically. I'm no expert. Neither am I. (laughs) But I do think it's interesting. And I do wonder when she went at 37 weeks, was it a scheduled go and we're doing it now mm-hmm. for a reason or was? Well, so as we get closer, the conversation has always been based on what had happened the previous time to her. It's like, so with twins, as it gets closer, it's any twins is considered a high risk because there's two mm-hmm. in there. So as you get a little bit closer, the appointments get closer together. They're checking the fluid. They're checking their position. They're checking how comfortable they are in there. And if anything, once it's starting to look like, oh, we're close, then they schedule out um, the c section. It will be a C-section because the previous was a C-section. Mm-hmm. Um, so then they'll schedule that out. And then you hope like the water doesn't break prior right. to that and that it comes that we make it to the day that has been scheduled. Right. Because when the water breaks, they kind of want to move a little bit quicker. And most people don't realize this, but most people's waters don't break. I guess that is kind of a thing that's more romanticized. Like some women's do, yeah. but it is a thing that's more like romanticized in movies. I've only had one friend have their water break and all of my friends have 19 children. So 
Wow, there's 19 between no, all of your friends? No, there's not. Okay. You really threw me I really got you. I really um, got you. <laughs> so then they just know because they're having contractions. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. Super crazy. Crazy. Super crazy. Your mom's Chris's water mom's did water break. Broke. Was she sitting or standing or what? Do you remember? She was laying down. She Well, hers is kind of like a horror story because oh. her water broke and then she was like, my water broke. And the nurses were like, no, it didn't. You're fine. She's like, what is that then? They're like, you're fine. And then, like, I just was in there, like, suffocating, <laughs> like, because it had broken. Yeah. And they were wrong. So when the water breaks, I guess that's the em- embryonic sac. It's the embryonic the... fluid, embryonic fluid, but whatever. They don't want the baby not in that because that stuff is what keeps the baby good. Functioning. Yeah. Which is why when your water breaks, you get to the hospital. Wow. Yeah. But in other situations, you can just straight up chill. Just wait. But I was yeah. like hours of suffocating. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I was a C-section. Me too. I don't really know much about my you don't? forthcoming into the world. Really? You don't even know if it was a C-section? I or know. Birth? I think it was a vaginal birth. Wow. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, this is my porn from Lizzie. Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey, the way they are with each other literally <laughs> makes me text my husband like, baby, grab me in public please she couldn't <laughs> stop texting me about this and the fact that you don't care no no no. i do care the first thing i saw was her running up to him after the show in such a loving embrace and kissing him it did radiate pure happiness like i'm gonna give yeah. i'm gonna give them that let me give so for those of you that don't know Tr- taylor know, swift is this, this massive artist in the it, world it, who uh, sings songs about love and life and she's dating this guy who plays football are you kidding me like somebody doesn't know about this we're letting them know if they don't because sometimes they feel like they don't know Anyways, she took... This is one that does not need pretext. She's on a world tour right now called the Eras Tour, where she's Which putting on I'm a show still about so, all the songs she's ever I'm performed. still so pissed that they get... the international tour dates get Sabrina Carpenter. I fucking love Sabrina Carpenter. I do love Sabrina Carpenter. And I got stuck with Haim? Whoa. <laughs> I'm like, I'm glad Whoa. Haim's out there. I'm glad they're serving their purpose, but it's never going to be for me. I'm. That's no hate to them. First of all, it's pronounced Haim. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> And I love them. I just want Sabrina Carpenter. So Travis she gonna Kelsey be in flew Miami? to Argentina. You and I are definitely going again, right? Like Miami. we're bringing the babies. Yeah, to Miami. And hopefully I'll be pregnant as fuck and then I can deliver. <laughs> in Miami. <laughs> Dude, how sick would that be if you delivered my baby at a Taylor Swift concert in Miami? I don't think I'm the one you want delivering your baby. Aren't you? <sighs> You don't even think I can cook for my children. There's a very big difference between, you know, catching and cooking. <laughs> okay. What do you do, though? Like, because there's like the umbilical cord. Like, I just don't I think know you're supposed you... to just tie it off and call 911, bro. Okay. I don't want you to be gnawing that motherfucker off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyways, she's performing a show. Taylor Swift, is she? In Argentina. I don't her, think this is... In her, in her, bas- her Fast football, forward five minutes foot, to after the her pretext. Her award-winning football-playing podcasting boyfriend travis kelsey has come to see the show right. and he's in the celebrity box with her dad that her dad is fucking filming him they're having a great what fucking is this? The Drew Barrymore show? Sh- 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 yes that was good that was the Drew Barrymore <laughs> everyone take your shoes off and sit on the floor um it's so, so intense they like so scissor intense. on the couch I, while like, like holding each that. other like, and like drew <laughs> i have childhood trauma i don't want to be touched. i feel like she's just leaning into it she knows at this point that it's so awkward and uncomfortable that she's like people are going to tune in to see how fucking weird she's this starts licking their tongues while they're talking it's so crazy (laughs) anyways we should do a whole episode like taylor swift is performing karma which i believe is the last song of the night okay but can i can i tell you my your my series of events i think essentially we're caught up but he wants to go to the end of the night as opposed to the linear version of the story so we will be back and so that four minutes could have been cut from this show we could go right back to where i started where i saw i watched the tiktok she runs up to this man gives him a loving embrace and happiness is radiating from the two of them which i find so endearing and uh, lizzie was like how are you not wet and i was like i am wet i love this oh my gosh (laughs) this is incredible and then she sends what he gave me by the way (laughs) you had your moment i really got a thumbs up on my text and so uh, (laughs) then she sends me her changing the lyrics to karma and i was like the lyric she changed in the song karma was karma is a guy on the chiefs and he's coming straight home to me yeah right. and him in the celebrity box the dad turns the camera on him and he's just like oh my god 
But he does leave like the this. dad hanging. The dad goes to give him a high five, and Travis doesn't even realize the dad. I mean, he probably to give him didn't see five. it. Taylor Swift just changed the lyrics at the Eras tour to him. I know, but can you imagine her dad? Like honestly, high, it's so embarrassing and humiliating when you go for the high five and the person doesn't see it, and you're being recorded by the whole stadium, and Travis is just sitting here and never does it. So then the dad has to go. Oh man, really? <laughs> I guess I didn't see that. You were so focused on Travis. Oh uh, yeah, because it's so cute. God, the my video hair is so you sent yucky. me was also trash. It was like the girl was shaking her phone, so you couldn't see the real excitement. Yeah, because imagine she was being there for that moment in history. The fuck. So my whole thing is like that confirms to me that it's just so put on for the public. Like what happened to the Taylor? And I get if she's really happy and she's just turned a new leaf and she's in a place in her life where she wants to tout her relationship because she's happy. But it's such a 180 from with Joe and her private life previously. Mm -hmm. She wanted no one to know anything Listen, about it. We all know Joe so is the a way beta that, cuck. But the way that she's playing <laughs> into all of this, like, makes me believe. Like, they might be in love, they might be falling in love, but I just feel as They're though. They're in love. Like, I loved the sweet embrace. Love. The like changing the lyrics to have everyone go crazy was a little bit like two PR movie for me. Oh, and I And it's hate all you. about how I perceive. The I world, love right? the love, and every time I try to just enjoy this love story, everyone's like. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, okay, dude, you hate love. I get it. I mean, it's fun to believe in. It really is. So believe it. You think, believed in Santa. I think they're having... For years, you believed in Santa. I think they're having... Which, a, by the way, is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. No, I'm putting that onto my kids as well. You're not ha letting your kids experience the joy of Santa? Are you kidding me? I mean, I probably won't, no. What? I didn't believe this in Santa. This is where we break up. I didn't believe in Santa. This is where we part ways. I played games with I the adults. Have, I was like, Santa's coming, right? I can't have my kids around your kids trying to tell my kids that your dad said that, that their dad said Santa isn't real. Fuck I mean, off. my kids aren't going to do nasty things like that. I We're just like not going to have a big Santa conversation. Okay. Santa will be Travis Kelsey. Our differences <laughs> are shining th real through. <laughs> and somebody was like, he talks about Taylor on his podcast all the time. It's like too manly for me. I couldn't get through two minutes of it. I really yeah. tried for her no. to get the inside details. And I was like, it's not for me. But I'm sure he like shows her a great time around the bedroom, uh, which I'm having a hard time picturing, figuring out for Ariana and her new boyfriend. I, my... <laughs> Roman Empire ick is Ariana Grande and her Spongebob lover. You just wrote in this document that that's what you're living for. Where, where is this? Ariana. Ari is going to her boyfriend's I can't get over these two. A bunch. And I just can't get, oh, yeah. can't get over these two. No, I can't get over it. I read it as enough. You're like, t you're going to ruin our production. What's going on? Nothing. Okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think they're so yucky. So she, <laughs> I think they're so yucky. I think all of it's so yucky, dude. I can't, and I feel bad saying it, but it's Are like- Are we horror? No, this is why my, we gotta go back to the car. We're doing hot topics and we're spreading toxicity into this world. <laughs> None of you need to know that I have a distaste for Timothy Chalamet. <laughs> Nobody needs to know that. Nobody needs to know that he doesn't like Timmy. I should mind my own business. I know what it feels like for people hating me for no reason, just because I give them the ick having a presence anywhere. And dude, so nobody same. needs to know who that is for me. I know. <laughs> We've got to cut Hot Topics. We do, but what are we going to talk about? I mean, we were fine without Hot Topics. I, I think that us doing Hot Topics is the only thing that legitimizes our podcast for my husband, though. Because when someone's like, oh, what's your podcast about? I'm like, it's not really about anything. It's just me and my best friend talking shit about our husbands and what our weeks are like. And then Joe goes, no, they do a celebrity Hot topic segment as well. And it's like, he thinks that distinguishes us like gentlemen. Right. <laughs> so if we take that away, I don't know if he can look me in the eyes anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and fuck uh, Ariana Grande. Whoa, 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 I'm just whoa, kidding. Whoa, whoa. I'm gonna walk that back. That was a joke. I was joking, but also <laughs> I don't like her. My sister said she's in the studio allegedly recording her next album, and everybody loves her except for me. You don't love her? No, I don't. I I don't understand what she's saying. <laughs> And I can't. Once you figure it out, though, it's so good. I just can't get behind so it. Fun. It's a little too sexy for me. Yeah, you're a little too prude for Ariana I'm Grande. I'm super prude. Yeah, you stay in your Taylor Swift lane. I like Thank You Next. But you know what I appreciate about Ariana Grande is I know her relationships are authentically rooted in love because I the guys that she chooses. I don't think that's true. She, the last one was a real estate agent, and this one <laughs> is, I mean. It's giving the Backstreet Boys song, like, as long as you love me, baby. I These are not care. for publicity. She's no, not but dating what I'm this saying guy for is press. She doesn't care as long as the person like 
is obsessed with her. And so that's love for her. That's what she knows is love. But does she love them or does she love people who are obsessed with her? Nobody will ever know. It's giving me the ick. <sighs> We've got to stop doing hot Yeah, topics. we do. We got to move um, on. Let's yeah, talk have... about the Travis Barker drumming in the delivery room. <laughs> well, yeah, because we're going to have a lot more nice things to say about this. I do. You, you do? I do. You're positive about this. I listened to it and I felt lulled. I've never looked at... Soothed and lulled. I've never been checking in on Kourtney Kardashian more. And she's given me nothing so far. Yeah. Like she had her baby, but I know nothing. Well, we know that he played drums in the delivery room to the heartbeat. Well, I know that now that you put this on the document. And let me tell you, did he bring that up? Like, was he like, yes. had his assistant bring that mechanism yes. up to his room? So he brought a little practicing drum to the delivery room. Second and of all, just watching that gave me anxiety. So if I was Courtney, I'd be like, shut the fuck up. Like you're driving ah. me up the wall. I felt very nice about it. I can appreciate that he's talented at it. I do love Travis Barker, but I understand. Like my brother grew up playing the drums. So mm -hmm. everything was a drum set to him. We'd mm -hmm. be in the Car. The car's a drum set. We'd oh, be God. at the house. The wall's a drum we set. We get it, Austin. And it would You're drive a drummer. Me fucking crazy. <laughs> and that's what this was giving yeah. me. Like, driving I me crazy. I would have preferred a bongo to the heartbeats than the sound of the. Like, I could appreciate the talent, and yeah. you could hear with all those fast things the heartbeat inside mm -hmm. of it, and it was beautiful and gorgeous, but I was like, not while I'm trying to give birth, Travis. Tra can Chris, can you actually look up the post of it? Because I think that instead of spelling babies as in possessive, he spelled babies as in plural. Who? Travis Barker, like, practicing to my baby's heartbeat. I think he spelled it as, like, multiple babies. As B -A -B -I -E -S? opposed Yeah. Two? Yeah, I do. I'm, I fuck that up all the time. Well, do you think that that she had twins no I oh okay this is why we can't have hot topics <laughs> no I mean I love the guy but I swear to god it, like Landon put a TikTok okay, up okay, where okay, he, okay, no okay, listen okay. listen Landon put a TikTok up where he asks like do you know who Abraham Lincoln is I feel borderline icky about putting this episode out babies, babies. he did spell it b-a-b-i-e-s and I honestly think that was just a typo on his part. But the fact that no well, one's wait, talking about my it. My baby's heartbeat would be B A B apart from Oh, like it thing could y, be. Or B A B Y S. -S. I, or babies. maybe he's talking about Courtney and the boy's heartbeat. Let's hope. Babies. Like well, Courtney's uh, his baby and that's his baby. I get what you're saying. Do you? Kind of. <laughs> no, I understand the different um, forms of babies, but I'm just perplexed at this moment. It's a lot. I haven't been able to finish selling Sunset, so no spoilers. The reunion's this Wednesday, so maybe I'll be able to catch up before the next episode, and then we can all talk about selling Sunset and the reunion. Okay. Do you want to watch the reunion together? No. Uh, I would like to, but there's no way I can finish in a day and a half the entire season to watch uh -huh. the reunion. Uh -huh. Somebody had sent a lookalike for you, but I didn't send it to my phone, so we're never going to know until next week. The fuck? Well, there you guys have it. Thank you so much for watching and supporting our podcast. I think we'll be back in the car forevermore because I can't be letting you guys know that I have a distaste for any sort of celebrity. <laughs> Listen, it's just the first day of my period. I'm upset. You're tired. Chris so is tired. always an Eeyore in the room. I'm on a vacation <laughs> hangover because my family was just here, so I'm being nasty. Well, here's something that I do want to say. I think it's really impressive how Ariana Grande has grown her brand and made a such an iconic fucking stamp upon the earth. And I think that is so great and empowering. And I love Timothy Chalamet. <laughs> Just love him. I bet he's really good in bed with Kylie. I bet he fucks. <laughs> I bet he fucks. I bet he fucks. <laughs> I bet he fucks. If there's and anyone you know Kylie, that fucks, it's Timothy. And Kylie has fucked. I bet so Kylie he, fucks. I bet Kylie fucks too, but Kylie yeah. knows when somebody can't fuck. Yeah. So I'm sure Timothy. Yeah. Did you see how fuck. Kylie kissed her family coming in in Pasadena? <laughs> Kylie what? fucks if that's how she's coming in to I'm kiss her sure family. I'm not sure I'm into this. I gotta be nice. I love the Kardashians. I love everything everyone's giving. Um, hope we're all well and healthy and happy. And that's the sip. <sighs> Bye. <laughs>